impulse momentum okay and then the other thing is conservation of linear momentum so we've done conservation of energy this is slightly different it's called conservation of momentum so i'll i'll give a brief overview of uh, what is the principle of angular impulse and momentum and then we we'll start solving some problems and we are only doing particles now in the next section next chapter is going to be uh, rigid bodies So first thing is the what's known as a <coughs> impulse. Impulse will denote it by I, and impulse is a vector. The definition of an impulse is it is basically the integral of f, which is a vector, times dt, and the time goes from one to two. So when you apply a force over a period of time, you take the force, you integrate it. With the time it's applied, and then that gives you the impulse. Okay. Note that impulse is a vector. It is not a scalar. Okay. Now what you've seen is that f equals m a, right? Newton's laws, which which uh, boils down to m dv dt. So what we can do is we can move the dt around. So multiply both sides by dt to get f. dt is m dv okay now we can uh, have an alternate definition for impulse f dt t1 to t2 is m dv where v goes from v1 to v2 and mass is not changing with time unless it's a rocket right mass is constant so mass times v2 Minus v one so the impulse is also the change in uh, momentum momentum is mass times velocity okay we i don't think there's a notation for it okay m v and it's a vector So, if I take this expression, f dt equals m v2 minus v1, I can rewrite it as m v1, okay, which is the in, uh, initial momentum, linear momentum, plus t1 to t2 f dt, which is the impulse, equals m v2. Okay, so a particle has some momentum. When you apply a force over a period of time, its velocity is going to change, and that's going to show up as a change in momentum m v two. So this is very similar to the earlier expression, right? Uh, where we talked about energy. There's some energy. There's work done, and the consequence of the work done is that the energy is she has changed. Or t one plus q one two equals t two. That's what we derived the previous class. So this is. Uh, an important equation, and it's called the principle of linear impulse and momentum. Okay. 
So, conservation of momentum is another important uh, expression. This, this is very similar to conservation of energy. Okay. And uh, what is the conservation of momentum? Well, I'll list it with an example. If you have two particles colliding with each other, okay. Uh, so, two balls, particles colliding with each other, then it turns out that the the total impulse is sorry the total momentum is conserved. So the total momentum is constant. Okay. In other words, if 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 the two So M M I V I is the mass times velocity, so it's the linear momentum, and that is the summation carried out for both both particles, or let's say one all the way to n. Okay, is equal to the final momentum. Or I can I'll write this in a more explicit way. M1 V1 plus M let me write this M V M1 V1 the I denotes its initial momentum M2 V2 I equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final where V1 V2 I are initial velocities before collision and V V1 V2 F final velocities after collision. So if you sum the momentum before collision, it should be the sum of momentum after collision. Let me write this in a slightly different way just to make it consistent with the earlier notation. So M I V I, this is the we use a different notation M J V J, where this is the initial momentum equals M J V J uh, final, where J is goes from one to n, where a, where there are n particles. So uh, when we solve problems, essentially uh, I would recommend again drawing free body diagrams, and then the question is how you got to use one or the other principle. So we have seen so far we can use F equals ma, we can use conservation of energy, or we could use this principle. This is a totally different one from the previous ones. So there are three options you have when you start analyzing it, and then once you do that, the last step is to do kinematics in case. You want to find velocity, the distance displacement, then you got to use that. So uh, essentially, the flow is going to be the same, except that we're going to use this principle sometimes. I'll, so when we solve problems, I'll tell you when you decide to use this particular principle. What is that in the problem which you uh, have to see in order to apply this principle? So let's illustrate that with a couple of uh, problems. Here is 
the first problem the motor exerts a force f on the 40 kg crate so this is 40 kg uh, determine the speed of the crate when t is 3 seconds and when t is 6 seconds when t equals 0 the crate is moving downwards at 10 meters per second so at t equals 0 v is the velocity of the crate is 10 meters per second downwards so the force profile is also given to you here so it's not a constant force it's it's actually linear starts off at 150 and it goes all the way to 450 in 6 seconds okay so let's first draw the free body diagram for uh, the mass b because uh, we're given the mass of the of the crate right so the body diagram subtension t okay so free body diagram of the of the crate and the pulley because i want to find a relation between f which is applied by the motor and the force coming over here so this is f so because the pulley is in extension the string is inextensible, the pulley is massless, the same force is transmitted across the pulley. So this force has to be 2F and so this force which is applied on the crate has to be 2F and then Mg is downwards. Okay, now once you get that, now the question is, we got to think, choose a principle to apply. Uh, so in this course, there are only three things, three principles we've studied so far. Initially, we did F equals MA, that's equations of motion. The second one is conservation of energy. Okay, and the third one is this one, linear impulse and momentum. And you should, in the exam, final exam, basically when you get a question, you got to figure out which of those three principles are applicable. Now, in all, yeah, question. Just real quick, uh, why don't we just use uh, one in the pool? Can we avoid the problem with that? I mean, just one right in the pool. One what? Uh, like, we just use a provider. Yeah, you can use, you can just draw for the pulley, that's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you got to show the pre body diagram for the mass, right? Because eventually that mass is going to accelerate. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to show the pulley per se, you can show 2F and MG, that's fine. But you can, I don't think you can ignore the free body diagram of the mass because you're going to write the equation for that. Okay, so you know, so I said there are three principles. Okay, and I can tell you that any question in this course you can answer with equations of motion. Okay, the other two me methods, which is conservation of energy or uh, linear impulse and momentum, they make a life easy. If you can apply those principles, those principles will make your calculations simpler. So you want to try to apply those principles first. If you are not able to apply those, then F equals MA will always work. Okay. Now, I told you for conservation of energy, you're trying to see if velocity is a function of distance. Is that, if the question asks you velocity is a function of distance, then use conservation of energy. For this particular section or this particular chapter, if you asked velocity as a function of time, then you want to use a principle of impulse momentum or conservation of uh, uh, momentum. And the reason is because if you look at the if you look at this formula here, it's basically a relation between force, sorry, uh, yeah, force, velocity, and time. There's no distance coming in this equation. X is not there. So if you ask to find velocity at a particular instant of time, or vice versa, then you want to use this equation. If you ask to find velocity as a function of distance, then you're better off using conservation of energy. Okay, so uh, so we see that in this problem, you're asked to find the velocity at, or speed at t equals three seconds and t equals six, six seconds, which means that you, you should uh, think of using principle of impulse and momentum. Again, you could use F equals MA, you'll get the same answer. 
In fact, this could very well have been asked in the chapter, I think it's 13. Use f equals ma. Okay. However, we will use a principle of linear impulse and momentum. Which states that m v1 plus f t t equals m v2. So what we do know is that initially at t equals 0, the velocity is given to us. What we do not know is velocity v2 at time t2, which is uh, I think 3 and 6 seconds, right? In order to find the velocity, we need to do that integral f dt. So we need to find f dt from t1, which is 0 to 3 seconds, and we need to find uh, f dt from 0 to all the way to 6 seconds. So in order to do that, we need to find basically the force. So 0 is here, 3 is going to be here. We need to find this force. Okay, Because if we can find the force, then the area under this curve, f dt, right? the area under the curve is f dt. So if you can find the area under the curve, then we have obtained the work done, or not finally the work done, but the impulse. So this is how we will compute f dt. We will find the area under the, well, this, the green area. Okay, so that is a trapezoid. So if you are to find the area of a trapezoid, I need to find F3. And then it's very straightforward. If you think that's hard, then you can actually split it into a, a, a rectangle and a triangle and find the area of the triangle separately and the rectangle separately and sum them up. So let's try to find F3. Uh, so F3 lies on the straight line which connects 150 to 450. So basically what you do is you find the slope of the line. <coughs> this is 150. This is 0. F3 is unknown. This is going to be 3 seconds. And then this is 450 and 0. Right? So we try to find the slope of this line. So 450 minus 150 divided by 6 minus 0. So 450 and 0. So 450 is here, 6 is here. Similarly, there'll be 150 here and 0. So it has to be the corresponding things. Uh, then we have F3 minus 150, this point and this point, divided by 3, which corresponds to F3 minus 0. So that's one equation, one unknown in F3. F3 comes out to be 300 newtons. Okay. So now we are uh, ready to apply the principle. Let's write, uh, let's sub in one. See, the mass is 40 kilograms. Okay, uh, we, we have to choose some convention. Uh, let's assume that upwards is positive. So if upwards is positive, the initial velocity of the crate is downwards. Right, it's downwards, 10 meters per second. So minus 10. Now we need to find the work done, sorry, not the work done, my bad. Impulse due to F uh, dt, this thing, right? It's going to be the area of the trapezoid, which is basically half times uh, the base, which is 3, times the sum of the two heights. So in this case, the heights are 150 
and it is 300. Okay, so that's the work done due to F3, but the force is 2F. This has to be two, two times. Or in other words, it's FDT is really 2FDT, work done by the force. So 2F does work on the or 2F does an imp impulse contribution, but mg also contributes to the impulse, right? Because those are the two forces, 2F and mg. So the other force is mg, and since mg is constant, you just have to do T2 minus T1, so it's going to be 3 minus 0. So m is 40, gravity is 9.81, it's 3 minus 0. So the sign is positive because force is upwards, 2F is upwards, and this is negative because mg is downwards, and downwards is negative. So this is equal to mv, m is 40 times the final velocity. So in that equation, everything but V2 is known, so we can solve for V2, or let me write it at V at t equals 3. So V at t equals 3 seconds is equal to minus 5.68 meters per second, okay? Which means that it's downwards because upwards is positive. Okay, so then we are also asked to find the velocity at t equals 6 seconds. It's, the reasoning is exactly similar to the reasoning applied for t equals 3. In this case, you'll, you'll find the area of the of the bigger triangle, sorry, bigger trapezoid. So I will leave the details to you. You want to do that at home yourself and just check the answer. So you need to write the equation. relating v at t equals 0 to v at t equals 6 seconds and solve for v at t equals 6 seconds. So v at t equals 6 seconds, what I got is 21.1 meters per second. Okay, do, do it yourself. It's the same, same formula, same things. Yeah, question? How would you be a three uh, negative? <coughs> like when does the motor kick on and all that? So I know initially it's looking down. Mm -hmm. So the, the on, so, the so initially it's moving down. That's when the motor starts. And it starts off with a force of 150. So it's moving down and suddenly the force changes, the force is applied. Because of the force, the acceleration is going to be uh, basically linearly increasing. That acceleration will cause the mass to accelerate from downwards to upwards because 2F is upward. This, okay, yeah. this is the force and the great volume is still greater than the motor trying to pull it in, so it's still falling for a little bit. And then That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 40 times 9.8 is what? 40 times about four, 40 times about 400, right? And the force, initial force is what? 150. So the force, sorry, it's 300 because it's 2F. Right? So initial force upward is 300. Downward force is constant, it's 400. So, but since the force is less than, um, uh, it's still going to go move, start moving down. Eventually, when the force is just 400, so when when it, when it's F3, F3 is 300, right? I solved for F3. F3 is 300. <coughs> so when F3 is 300, 2F is 600. So you have about 600 force and 400 downwards, which means that the net acceleration is upwards. So it will start 
slowly, since acceleration is upward, the velocity which was downward is now going to start decreasing. So, it decreases. so it, that's why the velocity changes from 10 downwards to 5.68 downwards. And then eventually what happens is that force, over time the force is much greater than 400, uh, it tends to accelerate it upward, which means that the velocity at t equals 6 seconds is going to be positive. 